<sighs> Welcome to my space. I'm Raymond Wood and I'm a director. I'm Evan Hodges and I'm a composer. I met Evan in 2015. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I was I had the opportunity to direct a movie called The Canadu, and I had I think you're actually the very first composer, like legitimate composer that I'd ever worked with. I think prior to that, all of my films I had either scored yourself, scored right? myself, yeah. which was something, or or it <laughs> conjoled like musician friends of mine to come play guitar or something. Yeah, uh, you were really picture. into the Pixies. Fight club, <laughs> sure, right? yeah, yeah, of course, naturally. <laughs> so you're trained in jazz, yeah. right? Uh, classical? Jazz? jazz, classical, everything. Kind of a which, bit, yeah. which is, I guess, probably not what you would think of in terms of like the first person to score a horror film. Yeah, but it's just it's just storytelling. It's just but colors. And exactly, times. and that's the thing too. It's like what's more important to me, and I I think what should be more important to people is, in, in terms of a working relationship, you know, having similar tastes and similar sensibilities, just in terms of the way you you tell stories. Yeah, right? for sure. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, I think we work well together because we both like good film and good art and good music. Yeah, it kind of goes hand in hand. I think. Yeah, and genre is just another tool. Like genre is just another tool of storytelling and a way to like play with expectations or subvert sure. them and yeah. stuff like that. And I always love the idea of going the way you wouldn't necessarily think. A priority should be understanding your limitations and then finding creative ways to work within your limit limitations. Oh yeah, like for the Canada, I only used like uh, a Korg MS-20 for that whole score. For me, it was more or less like creating an atmosphere, you know? Yeah. Like I, I that's kind of how I approach all of my scores. Uh, obviously, obviously some scores, like if it's a period piece film or if it's like a very traditional film, like I'm gonna score to the scene and what it needs to be. But even that approach, I still do it the same way, which is like creating tone and creating emotion and context with that, you know what I mean, with music. Not yeah. having it be like in the forefront. I think like, you know, John Williams has that covered really well. But, sure. you know, I, I don't think every film, and it's great, but not every film needs that. Yeah, it doesn't you know? necessarily need the music to be a lead character. Sometimes it needs to be a It's just a supportive character, character. yeah. Sometimes it needs to be an extra. Yeah, yeah, well, sometimes it just doesn't need to be there. And sometimes you know? it should have We've never been so cast. We've had so many arguments. <laughs> exactly. You, I didn't want to put music in a scene, and I and I literally told you. I said, if you didn't want music, you should have, you should have had a better scene. Yeah, and and you're right. And in, in that case, and in a lot of cases like that, it did come down to not thinking far ahead enough in the process about how, like transitions are huge. Oh yeah, totally. Huge, and, and I just, I think that a lot of people don't think about that or prioritize how you're gonna get from one scene to another. Yeah. And we talk about this all the time, when we, you're like working on a project or we see a film where we're talking about like, this three minutes could be cut out. Like sure. people underestimate an audience's like connecting the dots mm -hmm. ability. You know, you don't have to show them getting in the car to go to the venue, you just, yeah. Cut to it. Yeah. We had we started out where you scored the picture for me, and then we started out where I had made the film, and then I was like, but but just right from the script anyway. And now we've evolved to a place where I literally can just give you the material before we've even shot a frame of footage. And you can already write material for the you can write cues for the film that then now I have this to be able to show the actors, yeah. show the director of photography, show the production yeah. designer, and help people even before we start to film, understand the mood and the tone, the tone that I piece, want for yeah. the scene. Yeah. yeah, And that's an incredibly helpful tool that uh, I don't think nearly enough filmmakers avail themselves Yeah, I of. know that uh, one of our favorite directors, uh, Fincher, 
Does that oh, with, sure. With, with Trent Reznor and, and Atticus Ross. Ross. That's yeah. right. Yeah, they, yeah, seriously, they will get a script and they will write like 40 tracks yeah. of just whatever comes to their mind. And it's so, and you can tell, I mean, the, the difference is palpable because you can look at how they've crafted Man, the scenes. Man, Social Network is such a good score. Fantastic. Uh, I mean, who would have come up with that idea? Hand Bruise is so good, dude. Oh my gosh, it's so good. But that's a great example too of juxtaposition of like, who who would think that you're gonna make a, a, a movie about Facebook and yeah. get Trent Reznor to do yeah, the Yeah, and then the, the, the Mountain King. Oh yeah. With the, the, with the swimming and the Olympics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, but that's, that's great. I love that kind of stuff. The stuff you would never expect that just kind of blows your mind. For sure. Somebody reaches out to you to score a film for them. How do you approach the co the conversation about budget? Oh yeah, that's a tough one. Uh, obviously, different films have different levels of budget. Right? Uh, Don't I know it? Yeah. Uh, so it's, and it's always kind of like this thing you kind of save for the very end of the conversation. You know, it's the kind of the elephant in the room, but it has to be had. It has to be had. Uh, I always. You know, I typically leave the budget for the end because if during the conversation, I can kind of probe and ask questions like, you know, this and this, and you know, what's the premise about and what's this? And based on their responses, I can get an idea of their professionalism and, you know, their seriousness of it, you know, and how much I can kind of get an idea of where their budget could be. Now, typically like there's different approaches you can charge per minute. Uh, or you can charge per queue, you know. I typically like to just do uh, flat fees, you know. At the end of the day, I kind of have the math worked out to where my hourly rate and my per minute queue are kind of the same because I've developed my like proficiency. Does your time. rate change based on the budget of the, the total budget of the film? Yeah, it does. So like if it's if it's like a really big ad campaign, like they'll have a budget. So I can kind of have an understanding of where they're at. If it's a small like indie doc film or small, you know, short film or a feature near like a, an indie feature film, like I'll kind of have an idea of what how much music it needs. Uh, and typically if it's a project I don't want to work on, I will tell them my rate at the end, and then that'll kind of be the end of the call. Um, you know, if it's a project that I'm, if I know the person, I've worked with them before, or if I'm passionate about the piece, or it's gonna stretch me creatively, like make me learn something new, I'm gonna take a cut because I'm growing as a person, and as a composer. But if someone doesn't, you know, if someone is completely not musically inclined at all, how do you sort of bridge that gap with that filmmaker? Oh yeah, I mean, I always talk about, I just mention this all the time, which is have, you know, types of music and have adjectives to describe what you're feeling. Because music is subjective, you know? One person could feel something, another person could feel nothing. So understanding, I picked this up actually from a session musician. They were doing a Le uh, uh, Leland Sklar, who's a bass player. And the country singer uh, was saying she wanted the bass to sound like a rocking chair. And he had no idea what that meant, but he envisioned a rocking chair and played it. And she loved it. And it was, a, it was you know, like, it was like, it was like really good hit. I don't know what the song was, but you know, that same mentality of, you may not understand words to describe what you're hearing. Like it has, you know, woodwinds in this register and you know, the trombones down here echoing the French horn line an octave lower you don't know that stuff but you know this makes me feel this way so having words to describe that i think is a good way to kind of bridge that gap film is the marriage of you know picture and sound right. so you have to have good score and you have to have good audio like i think that we've talked about this all the time people will forgive maybe a plot hole or maybe a bad scene in a film. Then they'll forgive video issues. They'll forgive, you know, things that they see, but I don't think you can pull one over on people orally. No, you like, can't. I mean, it, it just shows, if it's not a good quality, it just literally just pegs it down and yeah. down and down. And it's one of those things that you don't, you can't necessarily like shake Pinpoint. the stick you, at. Yeah, no, it's like, like you, can't, you, can't, you can't understand. People, an audience can't understand it, but 
but they can feel it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like if a note is played wrong in, in a, you know, a piece of music, you may not pick up exactly what it was, but you know, yeah. like something, something's not something right. Felt something's, off there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That was weird. Yeah. You know, having some understanding of music, understanding of the pedagogy of music, so knowing what maybe piano is, it's a forte, fortissimo. Having an understanding of dynamics and having an understanding of instrumentation and what certain instruments sound like. Because, you know, instruments, I, I think instrumentation orchestration is just, are just like colors. You know, they're just different little colors you can splash on, the, on a canvas to create this music. And so if you're only listening to certain types of music, you're only gonna be that, that, in that direction. Also, I would say having an understanding of a broader sense of film. So not just, you know, if you like uh, Steven Spielberg and, and George Williams. Lucas and George, yeah, and the George and John Williams, like all that, that stuff's great, but not every film is that, you know, not every film is Indiana Jones or the Goonies or E.T. Sure, you know? yeah. So, you know, there's, there's different worlds and each world has its own kind of identity of music. And the cool thing about music is when you take music outside of its context and use it in another situation, it opens, it changes, it's like a juxtaposition, it changes the overall tone. Yeah. So if you if you have a good grasp and understanding of music and music and film, then you know, that kind of sets you apart.